might be a pretty good bet. That is, yes, on paper. I thought that about the Carmichael and the 125. But that didn't pan out. So it really comes down to the start. Uh, but, you know, Henry has just been amazing here at this track. 30 second board up. Now it's down. Five to ten seconds. The gate will drop a moto number two to the 250s here at Washougal, Washington. They're off and running. McGrath gets a pretty good start. Whoa, Les! That's number four, Ezra Les. Robbie Rayner getting hung up. Spud Walters, his bike is down. What another bad break for Ezra Lusk. This is where the problems start. Look right here. These guys are already getting hooked up. That gets uh, number 17, Rayner, a little off balance. Then Ezra Lusk on the back of Koikita, high sides. Bam, down on the collarbone. Spud Walters up over the bars. Rayner, that's the third week in a row in a first corner incident. He's gone down. Look at Button. And Looks this like was the hole shot on the outside. Larry Ward was credited with the hole shot on the inside. The button went up on that berm. He just about went out and shook hands with the crowd. And uh, that cost him the hole shot, but still a pretty good start. So Larry Ward of Team Suzuki gets his first hole shot of the year. Doug Henry, number one. Jimmy Button. Then Tim Ferry, number 20 in the Chaparral Yamaha. Not too bad a start for Mike LaRocco. McGrath just going by there on the left. Albie just in front of LaRocco. So those guys are in good position. And Emick, not too bad since he didn't score points in the first moto and had to start just in the weeds. He pulled it off. How would you like to be in Ezra Lusk's position? 31st in the first moto and then going down in the first turn. I'd rather be up here in the booth. <laughs> That's just horrible. I mean, it, it, every time he tries to just get something going, it just nothing happens at all or something bad happens. I feel really bad for the guy. Tim Ferry, who had an eighth in the first moto, is looking pretty good here in the second. Larry Ward turns the corner. He's got some distance, though, on Doug Henry this time as they come through that little whoop section through the trees. That was beautiful. Ward came out of that corner on the power, wheeling through that whoop section like that was flat, pulled a little bit of a gap there. Kevin Windham right behind Albertine, who's in fifth. Ward was fast the first moto. And it was important that he held off uh, LaRocco at the end there, too, because that's uh, another point he gave to his teammate Albertine in the championship. And who knows, it could come down to that. With three more events after Washougal, Tim Ferry's in a battle with a four-stroke Yamaha. Ferry with the independent Chaparral Yamaha team. And, of course, Button with Team Yamaha. Jimmy Button, number 10. Looking so strong after that third place in the first moto. He is getting a real attack from Ferry right now, and he covered his lines pretty well just until he got to the point where he could use that power and get a little gap. David, it was just a couple of weeks ago that uh, Jimmy was telling us in the interview that he's still learning the bike. Well, he was talking about changing his style a little bit, and it, he's only had it seven months to get used to it. I, I kind of thought, geez, seven months. I mean, you can learn another language in that amount of time, but... You know, I, I've never tried to get used to a four-stroke, so it's unfair for me to make that accusation. And, and it, thinking back, it took Henry right there quite a while to get used to it. But once he did, he was dialed in. It seems to be an advantage. And Jimmy Button came up with an eighth place overall at Red Bud, a fifth place at Unadilla, another eighth place at Troy. Obviously getting more used to it. And look at that, Albertine. He made a little mistake right there. Our art watches, he comes into the corner, stalls it. Quick reflexes, bump starts it. Even quicker by Wyndham to miss him. Look at that. Uh, got a little slide going, feet up, <laughs> clutches it, wheelies away, makes that pass. Henry Button and Ferry. And then Greg Albertine after Wyndham. Now, every time these guys are near each other, uh, Albie and, and Kevin, they got to be thinking, points, points, I need to beat this guy. I need somebody between myself and him to get even more. So that was a significant pass right there and a mistake by Alvin. Larry Ward is our leader as we see him come through the whoop section. Doug Henry in second, Button in third, and Ferry swish tailing in point. Larry Ward, like our winner in the second 125 moto, Jason McCormick, was raised right here in the state of Washington. The fans are with him. We'll be right back.
Strongest Man competition. It's a spectacle you have to see to believe. Can't wait for Serie A football to begin? Then you won't want to miss the Italian Summer Series on ESPN. Your favorite Serie A stars square off in Italy in preparation for the upcoming season. AC Milan, Fiorentina, Udinese, and more in the Italian Summer Series. Thursday, Fiorentina hosts Roma and Torino in the Memorial Cecchi Gori. Welcome back to Washougal, Washington. Art Eklund, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs bringing you the action. A couple of four strokes going by, and then the two-stroke of Tim Ferry. The battle for second is on behind Larry Ward. The two four-strokes. That's got to make so much noise. Ferry's back there going, I can't hear my bike. <laughs> Listen to those things. And now's the roost. Kevin talked about the roost from Henry, that first moto. Now he's got two of them this, this time. We can get up there. Bar to bar, but makes the jump pass. And he holds on to it. So Jimmy Button has passed his teammate, Doug Henry. That was pretty slick. It was. I'm not sure how he really even did that, to tell you the truth. He just, I think Doug actually made a little mistake on the approach to that, to that ski jump, and Button was all over it. He wasn't following, so he could take advantage. Button with a third place in the first moto has now moved into second. It'll be interesting to see if he can hold on. What an overall finish he, well, he's might have his best overall finish ever on a 250. He just seems to be on a roll today. Button has those times with, when he's riding well, his head is into it, everything's going right. He's amazing. I'd like to see him keep that up. Albertine in a good position right behind Wyndham. Wyndham would pick up a couple of more points if it stayed that way. Wow, that was... Tim Ferry now is giving Doug Henry a challenge. That reminded me of Bradshaw a couple of years ago, the way he went out and smacked that wall. He was laid over, dragging the clutch lever around that corner. He just didn't quite have the angle on Henry to make the pass. So Tim Ferry wants a piece of the former champion. Nice angle coming off that jump. Guys on the inside heading into those woods and had the advantage. He couldn't quite do it. He's got to go wide, but at least he's working. He's keeping Doug going, what do I got to do to keep him back? Doug's thinking about Tim. I guarantee it. That's, that's half the battle. And Wyndham is right there to possibly take advantage as well. Tim Ferry's done a good job with his new ride. Mid-season, signing with Chaparral. Well, support does a lot for you mentally. And look at how close all these guys are. If you're feeling a little bit better mentally, makes all the difference. Here comes Ferry to the inside on Doug Henry. So not only Jimmy Button has passed Henry, but Tim Ferry has also made the move on him, and Kevin Windham is right behind him once again. He's probably going, man, why couldn't I have done that at the finish of the first 250 moto? We'll go right around the outside. Doug left a little gap there. Windham. He's putting the test now to Doug Henry, and a big leaping jump by Kevin Windham. Henry right here has got to be a little puzzled, and it probably doesn't feel like he's riding poorly. I mean, I don't see him making big mistakes or anything, but everyone's just stepped it up and riding right around him. Now he's got Albie next in line that he'll have to defend his position again, and that should uh, give an advantage to Wyndham and Ferry, who just made the pass. Albie on the follow right now. Let's go down to the mechanics area. I don't know if it's early enough to start counting the laps, but the way it is right now, the overall is between you guys and Wyndham. Yeah, Wyndham's about maybe uh, six or seven seconds back. He's on the move, though. But I think Jimmy may move into, may move past Ward. He's, he seems, seems to be gaining a little bit of time. Uh, we'll just have to see how it pans out. Let me ask you a question about strategy. Are you going to tell Jimmy that that is the overall? Uh, you know, I don't know if I want to get him nervous too yet, quite yet, but uh, a, a few more laps will definitely inform him that that will be for the overall so he can maybe light a little bit of fire under his butt. Side by side, Albertine and Henry. Albie wants to move up another notch, getting closer to Kevin Windham. Henry with the edge. Albertine comes right back, and Albertine slips by Henry. So Henry now has dropped five positions in the last two laps. I think we're looking at a little bit of momentum shift. Albie is desperate. Henry has lost a little bit of that fire. Ward's crew finding the answers. That means a good thing for Albie, his teammate. I held this team up uh, through the Supercross season. Uh, had a lot of podiums, had the win in Seattle, and now Greg's taking over outdoor. 
and he's leading the series and looks like he's going to win the championship. And uh, last weekend I beat uh, Larocco one moto and beat uh, Wyndham one moto, and it felt really good to help Greg out a little bit. And uh, you know that's my goal for the rest of the year is to win a, win a national and uh, help Greg out as much as I can so that Suzuki can win a championship. There's Albertine, number eight, cutting into the corner, trying to move up the ladder. He had a fourth in the first moto. Larry Ward is still our leader here in moto number two. Button in second, Wyndham in third, as this is the battle for third, fourth, and fifth. We'll be right back with more 250 action in a moment. ESPN presents Know the Game. The 38th South American Basketball Championship Tournament was held in Bahia Blanca, Argentina. The four top national teams qualified for the pre-Olympic tournament in Puerto Rico. The top three teams also qualified for the Pan Am Games in Winnipeg. On June 20th, Brazil defeated Argentina in the final match, while Venezuela and former champions Uruguay finished third and fourth in the final standings. Know the Game. Chicago is next on the circuit as the teams get set for the Target Grand Prix of Chicago. Colombian sensation Juan Montoya continued his amazing rookie season with his fifth victory last week. Now, he has points leader Dario Franchini in his sights. A victory here will put him on top and break the rookie record for victories in a season. The Target Grand Prix of Chicago, live Monday on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. This week's Honda Riding Tip. Take a look at the conditions these guys have to endure throughout the season. The first national of the year, cold to the mud, to the humidity and the rain, but perhaps the toughest conditions are the heat and humidity, especially at Troy. Let's hear from the riders on how they deal with it. It's been hot in Georgia and humid, and I think I'll be fine. You know, it seems like every year I come here, it, it affects me a little less. Well, I think uh, it's really important whenever you, uh, whenever you come to a, a place that's uh, that's been known to, to be kind of warm. It's really important to, uh, to get hydrated, and uh, really that's one of the, the main things you do. You know, you try to get uh, accustomed to the heat as, as much as you can. For me, it's a little easier because I'm from the south, and uh, it's pretty warm down there. So uh, mainly just drink your fluids and, uh, you know, eat a lot of fruit the day of the race and, uh, and get as used to it as you can. One of the riders who excels in the heat, Ezra Lusk, here's his formula on how to beat. Be used to the heat, obviously. Just... Just stay out in the heat, you know, all day, even at the race, you know, try not to lose too many fluids, but just stay out in the heat, make sure you're used to it, and uh, during the week at home, just, you know, ride a lot in it, you know, wear thick shirts, and uh, not really wear what you're going to race in, uh, just wear thick shirts, wet shirts, and uh, get used to it. Back to the action, second moto, 250s at Washougal, Wyndham in third, Ferry and Albertine are going at it right behind him. Wyndham setting himself up really for a very fine overall finish. Henry has just spent this entire moto holding people up. Now he's got LaRocco. That's not going to be easy. Remember that in our flashback. Trying to hold off Henry, or uh, LaRocco rather, for the second moto win. Trying to pull it off again here today. Tim Ferry's best moto finish was a sixth. And that was all the way back at Mount Morris, the third round of the year. He's trying to hold on to this position against a very determined points leader, Greg Albertine. That was impressive. Albie got out of that corner, got on the gas, and it was like he was riding a 500. He just hooked up. Lots of jump passes in this photo. Look at here. Ward is battling with Jimmy Button. Button's got the edge on the inside. Boxes him out as they go into the trees. That was beautiful. He just crossed over the line. Same place he passed McGrath in the first moto. Worked again right here for the lead. He's inspired right now. I don't know if Ward can get him back, but he's certainly going to try because this crowd is behind him. Larry Ward now in second place, trying to get back on top of Jimmy Button. Boy, wouldn't this be something? Four strokes, sweeping at Washougal, but two different ones. That would be a first time. 
So Jimmy Button is our new leader. Our Suzuki trivia question, when was the last time that a Suzuki rider won here at Washougal in the 250s? The answer when we come back. ESPN presents Profiles. To win the race in Rio de Janeiro would be the greatest prize for any Brazilian, not just me. I came close when I achieved the pole in 97. It's a fantastic track, a different type of oval with a lot of room for racing, which normally doesn't happen on ovals. To win there would be another carnival. Are you ready for some excitement? The hard-hitting action of American football is back for another season on ESPN. The players are fighting for their football lives and a chance to make the team in preseason action. This week, the Seattle Seahawks travel to hostile territory and take on the aerial attack of the mighty 49ers. The NFL on ESPN. Seahawks 49ers, live Friday. The Test enters the season with high hopes of capturing a league title when they face PSV and defending top scorer Ruth Van Nisselrooy. Monday, it's Dutch First Division Football on ESPN. Hale Irwin attempts a three-peat as the top seniors swing into the Nashotic Country Club for one of the oldest tournaments on the senior circuit. Live Saturday, the Bank Boston Classic begins on ESPN. AMA Motocross is brought to you by Honda Motorcycles and the 1999 Honda Race Team. Honda, ride red. Welcome back to Washougal. The battle is underway for the lead. Jimmy Button, Larry Ward, and then Kevin Windham. It's the white flag lap, the final lap, and three riders separated by only two seconds. After a near photo finish in our first moto, wow, what a way to cap it off. Our Suzuki trivia question, what was the last time that a Suzuki rider won at Washougal? It was Mike LaRocco on a 250 in 1996. Back and forth we go. Jimmy Button holding on. We've got a lapper involved as well. Wyndham looking for any chance to move up in the standings. Jimmy Button, should he hold on to the top position in this moto, would win his very first 250 national overall. I asked Jimmy, has he stepped up his training any this season? For sure, I definitely been putting in the work. I've been, uh, you know, busting my butt all year, really. You know, doing doing more than I ever have. And uh, I think at one point in the year, I've maybe even training a little bit too hard. But uh, I've been training hard, working hard. You know, putting in the hours during the weekend. The last few weeks, my my consistency is starting to come back a little bit, and uh, starting to ride the bike a little bit better too. So uh, everything's you know coming together. It took a little bit longer than I expected, but uh, you know I'm still learning the bike. You know, every week. He's learned it pretty well here today as he laps Ezra Lust going into the woods right now. We've mentioned many times this is one of the most competitive seasons ever. Well, he could become the seventh different rider to win in nine events this year in the 250 class. Kevin has got kind of the bum deal trying to get through the lappers and lost some time. Ward, though, is picking up now on Jimmy Button. On this last lap, we could have a great finish again. Two out of the first three motos this afternoon have been just outstanding finishes. Button is just floating over this racetrack. As long as he doesn't leave it, leave the door open somewhere. That was one spot right there, but Ward wasn't close enough to take advantage. Coming out of these woods, you only have a, a turn to the right, and then you hit the whoop section down to the finish line. Wow, Ward made up some time. He sure did. Down the whoop section, here is the race right now. The checkers are waiting for these guys. Jimmy Button. Ward, whoa, he almost landed on him. Ward cuts to the inside, but Jimmy Button holds on for a great, great victory. Jimmy Button indeed becomes the seventh different rider to win this season in nine races. Down in the victory lane area, our Davey Coombs is with a very tired Jeremy McGrath. All right, Jer, how's it feel to be back in the motocross national? Ah, shoot, I got a little tired that time. We had a bad start, but it's fun to be out here, you know. It's, uh, 
I've been missing it, been sitting at home, and need something to do. <laughs> I gotta tell you, you're not gonna believe it won the overall. Button win the overall? Yeah. Oh, man, that's awesome, man. Great job for Yamaha. That's awesome. Uh, you know, I know he's been working hard, and he's been looking for that all year. I just wish I could have got a little better start at that second moto, but congratulations for Yamaha. It was a pleasure watching you out here again, Jay. Thanks a lot. You know, it's, uh, it's going to take a little, little time to get used to it again. <laughs> Which race are we going to see at again? Uh, I'm probably going to go to the next one, Millville, and, and um, you know, we'll see from there. So Larry Ward's all-out effort to take the win away from Jimmy Button didn't work as Button is busting his buttons with a 3-1 overall victory. Kevin Windham and Doug Henry also on the podium. Let's go back to Davey, who's with Jimmy Button. Well, for the first time ever, man, congratulations. Welcome to the winner's circle of a pro national. This is, uh, this is everything. This is it. 250 national. I, uh, I can't say nothing but just thank my team, Yamaha, uh, Bridgestone Tires, uh, my mechanic, Keith, JR, Bob, Steve. He ain't here this weekend, but Steve, I got it for you, buddy. Um, it paid off. Everything I've done all my life has paid off today. And uh, 10 years ago, this is my first national, and I guess 10 years to the day I win my first national. So hopefully I can just uh, just uh, live in it today and then uh, work on it next week. I know your dad was here for your first national, and we watched him through the fence. I think he was even more excited than you are right now. Yeah, I, this is great. Me and my mom and dad are here. They uh, haven't been too many races this year. My girlfriend, Christy. All my boys are here. It is, uh, this is it. This is the greatest, this is the greatest day of my life so far. And uh, 